It is a beautiful day and it feels great, amazing, fantabulous outside. It's your host for the most, Paul Plantu, and today I am doing my side yard garden tour. But before we get into it, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So right now we are doing a side yard tour. As I mentioned, I live in Houston, Texas, zone nine. And the reason why I'm saying this is a side yard, which a lot of people might be confused upon that terminology, is because I live on a corner lot. So I have a front, a back, and this side space that I've absolutely packed with plants. It used to be nothing but grass in between the sidewalk and the roadway nothing but grass along my fence line and the side of my house and i have done my best over the course of three years to pack this area out with as many plants as humanly possible to benefit not only myself but the wildlife the birds the bees the insects and of course i threw in a ton of edibles as well so i have a lot of native plants a lot of edible plants and a lot of plants that just attract pollinators into the garden so without further ado, let's go ahead and break it down. I'm sorry if the mic is a little bit weird. My old mic broke, so if there's like some wind disturbance, it is what it will be. Deal with it and smash the like button because we have a lot of plants to break down because I've added a ton to this area. And right now it is looking absolutely lush and it's fall. So everything is about to lose its leaves. That's why I have to get this done asap so we're going to start this tour on the side of my house and first and foremost we have this beautiful sago palm now i did get this for free on the side of the street someone dug it up after our first snow apocalypse in houston threw it on the side of the road and y'all can see how absolutely lovely it is looking right now and then this huge carolina jessamine that is a native that does pop off with amazing yellow flowers all up on the fence line. Then in front of the jessamine, I have the starburst tangerine. This is one of the only citruses that has survived in the freezing winters we've randomly been getting in Houston, Texas, which is a subtropical climate zone nine. So it is weird that that is occurring. I have two native beautiful lantanas lantana urticoides is the scientific name on the native varieties there is another star jessamine on that corner right there and then i have the ever so glorious mystic spires salvia i have three of these guys planted out i also have some shrimp plants i got these bad boys at an estate sale which is crazy i just dug them up out of someone's yard transplanted them and they are doing great here is what the flower does look like moving along we have another citrus i think this is a tangerine variety as well and behind it we have a little spice of tropicalness this is the sable minor palmetto this thing was absolutely tiny when i threw it in and after three years it finally is beginning to look nice and mature in front of that i have the sunshine ligustrum this bad boy is putting on tons of lime green slime green new growth i probably should trim it down it's getting a bit out of hand very huge but it does look lovely and it adds a nice pop of lime green into the landscape now behind my sunshine ligustrum i do have this thai plant which is popping out with red growth it has been burned to the ground on two different occasions and has came back. I also have a Yopan Holly or the Ilex Vomitoria. This guy will eventually get tall and cover up the fence. It is healthy. I have a couple of things I planted recently behind everything I'm mentioning, but that video hasn't dropped yet, so I don't want to spoil it. I do have a red yucca right in the very front of this bed, and it does pop off with amazing red flowers. Behind that, I have my pomegranate, which also got scorched all the way to the ground during the freezes, but it is looking absolutely crispy. Now below that, I have some Henry Duelberg salvias, which have popped off with flowers. They're pretty much done and have ran their course, but these guys were really skinny, really small when I put them in the ground, and now they're looking lush even back in this corner. And then I have my sad, pineapple pear tree i just put it in the ground a couple months ago but it should do good soon now one of my pride and joys is this giant duranta i mean look how huge this is it was completely annihilated all the way to the ground during the freeze 
but man its flowers are amazing now this is not native to houston texas but it is native to central and south america and with that being said the native bee species do flock to this Duranta. so it is covered in flowers and there's always native and honey bees all over this thing and it does produce some really interesting bright yellow berries and this guy is about seven and a half feet tall which it has achieved that height in one growing season now next to it i have one of my favorite natives which is in full bloom this is the salvia lucantha or the mexican bush sage as it's commonly referred to i mean look at these flowers it gets no better than this i have two of them and they are in full prestige bloom showing up and showing out at this time of the year oh my god oh my god and then i also have this golden sword yucca which is very cool i have a few of these planted throughout the landscape this one is decently sized but i'll show you guys a prime example in my hell strip of where i have a very large one oh man this one is standing at full upright attention sorry about the shadow but my lord this is beautiful now along my pine tree which i do have a ton of pine tree cover and canopy i have a passion flower vine this has popped off with a couple of flowers over the course of this year i also do have some tacomas which did pop up now these are native which is amazing they have cool yellow flowers they're about to go into flower most likely over here but this guy is creeping from behind the pine tree and is poking out looking amazing and we got a cooper's hawk pulling up now i also do have another small citrus this is another tangerine this thing was burned all the way down to this area and now it is pushing out new growth above the uh graft i also do have a climax blueberry it has seen better days but it is still holding on which is good i have two pineapple guavas or fijoas that are tucked away back here sorry it's hard to see with the shadows but the lighting is kind of crazy right now but in all honesty this is the best time where lighting will be achievable for this video now i do have a pride of barbados i also think it is commonly referred to as a mexican bird of paradise and then we have my huge tacoma stands standing upright ready to flower this dude is probably about 10 feet tall behind all that we have my beautiful arrowwood viburnum which is nice i did recently plant a persimmon you guys stay tuned for that we have my mexican olive now this has some of the softest leaves like the texture is wild if there's another toilet paper crisis i might go ahead and wipe my ass with this just to put it bluntly but it has gotten burned to the ground every time a freeze has came through, which is a little bit unfortunate. And now I'm trying to cover up my wall. So in my last video, y'all saw me plant another Ilex vomitoria, which is native. And then of course I have a ginormous wax leaf uh, or wax myrtle, southern wax myrtle that is growing. Sorry, sometimes I get dyslexic with these names. All right, continuing on, we have a couple of salvias in the ground which are smaller but they are popping i got those on sale at lowe's we have another free 99 sago palm which is tucked away and then we have this beauty this is a false indigo native tree it does fix nitrogen into the ground and just look at how texturized the leaves are this dude was tiny when I originally planted it and now it is popping. It also is a pollinator magnet and it is in flower. The flower is absolutely stupendously, audaciously aesthetic. When this bad boy goes into flower, it definitely puts on a show. We also do have another lantana right here. This one is the bacon and eggs where it's like pink then on the inside it's white with yellow in the center very cool my cousin's wife gave me that thank you very much i also do have a native hackberry tree sugar hackberry which is growing right here this was seeded by a bird taking a dump and it will produce a ton of seeds that birds will eat so i'm just letting this guy 
grow wild along the fence line. I'm gonna let it get a little bit above the fence and then I'm gonna prune it at that point. Then moving into my more desert cactus area, I have a Peruvian apple cactus, which is being supported. It might get killed if it freezes again. There's another little free 99 sago palm behind me. And then out of my uncle's yard, we have a beautiful prickly pear cactus without the prickliness, which is cool. So yeah, this guy has put on a ton of new growth, which is amazing. It is edible. I'm gonna let it get big. I also do have the rock roses. They are putting on a show and they do attract the native bees. I use these throughout the landscaping, but pretty much this whole area is like an on sale section. You did, cause it's a lot of ground to cover. Speaking of ground cover, you have the native horse herb, which I did not plant, but I did throw in the goldenrod and that dude is popping off it's not standing up vertically because it doesn't have too many other prairie species to holster it to hold it and to let it stand erect so yeah it does have a little bit of erectile dysfunction right now but we're working on it okay give me some time i almost just tripped over my cactus and then we have this abomination which is a giant cape honeysuckle now this dude will spread if the stems touch the ground and it has taken over a huge area. It is from South Africa, but it does attract a ton of pollinators when the orange flowers do open up. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some footage of last year when it was fully popping with flowers. I need to dig a ton of these guys up, transplant them, put them in pots, move them, but they are still out here doing their thing, but they're taking up way too much real estate in my humble opinion. Then we have a beautiful tree center, which also is native. Very nice, very nice. It almost died on multiple occasions during the droughts, but guess what? We still here, daddy. And here's another free sago palm. And then I have a weeping yucca, which of course is a native plant. It does add some nice texture. And this corner is definitely a huge work in progress. It is nowhere near complete, but we have another little color guard golden sword yucca we have a small agave which will get huge and will really take up some space and then we have an endangered species in the garden the longleaf pine which looks like a huge tuft of grass but it is starting to develop that trunk which i'm excited about now this corner is an absolute catastrophe we have a trumpet vine which is native, but this dude has sent out a ton of runners, right? So it's popping up all over the place. It even has gone across the sidewalk into this area. And I think my neighbors are chopping it down and battling it on the other side of the fence. So I'm gonna have to painstakingly dig this out just because it is not working. I mean, it's covering up the entire fence, which is what I wanted, but if my neighbors ain't messing with it and they're actively cutting it down, it's just kind of counterintuitive because it makes it look bad on my side. Now adding a pop of purple on this scene, I have a Laura Petalum, which is getting drowned out. And then also tucked away behind all of these suckers and runners, I have a couple more dwarf sable miner palmettos, which I planted from seed. And these guys are growing up and looking nice and sturdy okay now proceeding on with the lecture at hand we are tackling my hell strip which is technically most likely city property but it's up to the homeowners to maintain it so guess what i planted a complete orchard along this hell strip because it is the only spot that does receive full sun throughout the day so i had to throw in as many fruit trees as humanly possible and hopefully the city does nothing to destroy it they actually have laid a cable or like an internet line underneath this area but they used a machine where they didn't just dig up an entire trench it went underground and laid the cable so that was very considerate of them not to just destroy everything so i appreciate them for that so i'm not even a city hater right now okay they're still they're still in my good graces you dig but right here we have a white mouth day flower which is native this dude did just spring up and y'all can tell the flowers look so cute and scrumptious that i have to leave it in the corner i do have my two pecan trees that will cross pollinate they're about 10 feet apart from one another i have my pawnee pecan tree 
And this dude was not looking too great when I first planted it in the ground. And now it is taller than me three years later, which is awesome. I also have a Cape Fear pecan tree. This one isn't as full, but it is sturdy. The trunk is getting thicker and I think it is starting to flourish. And proceeding on, we have my Florida queen peach tree. Look at all the growth this has put on. But again, another sturdy and healthy tree. Then we have my mulberry, which does have one single trunk coming up. This guy definitely does need to be trimmed, but I can't wait until it starts producing some fruit out here. Another one that was tiny, a $13 low specimen that was about maybe one foot tall, and now it is seven feet in a year. We also have a ton of wild grape growing on the ground. I probably will need to pull that out, but I'm just letting it cool the soil right now, and having some cover is better than none. Bam, we have my pear trees, which have produced fruit that I did eat. It is decent, but it took a while to ripen. All right, so we got like five pears on here. All I gotta do is just twist up and they come right off. Look at that, boom. But I have a Leconte and I have a Florida home, you dig? Now this one is tending to grow like a damn broomstick which is annoying i want it to branch out more but it's trying to go straight vertical however this beauty is looking nice in terms of its structure it also is shooting a ton of vertical growth which is the tendency of peaches peaches pears but they have produced this is the only fruit tree that has steadily produced for me are my pears now moving on we have another peach and with that being said my peaches i just put in the ground literally this year so i haven't really given them too much time i have one in the backyard but it's not in full sun so i really don't want to judge it as not being a steady producer now that i have some where they are supposed to belong but this is a mid pride peach tree smaller but hey is gonna grow trust and believe then we have two apple trees that i decided to put in full sun because i have some in the backyard you have the anna apple tree which does have low chill hours so it is acclimated for this environment and then we also have the dorset golden apple which also is a low chill hour variety chill hours are when the temperature is below 45 degrees you need a certain amount of those hours in order for stone fruits to flower and then produce fruit with that being said i also have this premier blueberry which is doing decent, it's holding on. I have a Celeste fig tree, and then I also have a brown turkey fig tree. These were burned all the way to the ground, again in the freezes, but they have came back. Now I have three more Salvia Lucanthus that I did plant this year, and they are in flower. My knockout rose, this is the only one that has persevered through all the crazy climates but it is putting on a ton of flowers right now. Then continuing on, I have more rock roses, which you guys saw, and again, percolating, popping with flowers, which is ever so effervescent. Then behind me, the last tree of this tour is my Vitex tree. This guy is ginormous. I guesstimate it is about 12 feet tall. It does have flowers still on it. It attracts pollinators like crazy. Cardinals actually do eat these berries. Now I am gonna trim it back to where it just has this single vertical leader, just because there's a stop sign and I really don't want it to block that area. And it's taking up quite a bit of real estate as a multi-trunk giant shrub. Now in the front of my hell strip snake-like garden, which did used to be all grass, I have a ton of these purple heart plants, the Tradescantia paeta. Then working our way inside the bed, we have another giant agave. This is the biggest one I have right now, the century plant that is surrounded by a ton of the rock roses. These are some absolute stunners, have done super well in the garden. So I gotta show love to the rock rose. And with that being said, this garden tour is complete. You guys can see how lush things look. I'm gonna try and play some clips if I can find them of how this area looked originally. It was completely empty, completely desolate, had none of these beds. I created all of these guys, created this snake going along my hell strip, 
planted everything out and it overall is a huge crazy transformation that has taken place over three years of gardening and a lot of these plants i put in literally a few months ago so go ahead and smash that like button for me this still is a smaller channel so any like will most assuredly help any comments plant suggestions questions i will answer and i am open to hear again i learned how to garden i got into gardening during the pandemic so i am still new to this but i am doing my best to educate to show you guys what works for me in this area if you guys live in a similar climate trust and believe i'm gonna make a video about all the plants that have failed on me under different circumstances such as the freezes and the droughts because i'm just trying to create a resilient sturdy hardy landscape that can survive all the swings of ups and downs that have been happening climatically and that do attract as many beneficial wildlife species into my yard as kind of like an urban garden oasis that also can provide some sustenance and nutrition for me and my family, okay? But always remember, Earth is my planet and I will catch y'all next time with the front yard garden that is up next. Peace, and there's gonna be a pond update, all right? You're welcome, peace. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life by roosting And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to